Well, right now, he is the uh, director and the filmmaker for the film Spanish Lake. Philip Andrew Morton with us. Uh, Philip, welcome to KTRS. How are you? I'm great. How are you guys? Uh, well, we're doing all right. So you're you're living in California these days, right? Yep, sunny California where it's warm all the time. Yep. Yep. So how how strange for you? You grew up in North County to sit and watch Ferguson as the headliner across the world. It's truly bizarre. I mean, I go to my gym sometimes, and everybody's crowded around the TV watching tear gassed people in Ferguson, and the whole thing is just wild. It's not even just that it's Ferguson, it's that, you know, we've got military people, you know, just, you know, throwing, you know, gunfire back and forth. It's just, I don't know, the whole thing is crazy. Uh, your film, Spanish Lake, came out this summer. Let's explain to folks exactly what you profile, what your movie's about. Uh, the film documents the area of Spanish Lake from it, from when it was originally founded to where it is today, and it shows the change of the area both economically and racially through the process known as white flight. And the film shows the governmental policies that influenced the changeover in the area. And those policies included what? Some of the uh, lower-income housing that were placed there, and there was a lot written that blackjack. Uh, as a community fought against it, and it ended up in Spanish Lake because it was unincorporated? Yeah, yeah, all of that, as well as the block busting and steering by the realtors that drove black residents from the city to North County. How tough was it to make a documentary that wasn't all that glowing about the place where you came from? Um, you know, I don't know if it's not that glowing. I mean, I spent three years working on the film, and I love Spanish Lake. If I lived back in St. Louis, that's where I'd live. I think it was just more so there were a lot of ugly feelings involved by both past residents and the current residents. And my goal wasn't to make Spanish Lake look bad by any means. It was more to just portray the, the struggles and the uh, the challenges that the area has faced as a result of the changeover in the area. What are the do you know the percentages in terms of that what year it was what percentage white and now it's what percentage black? Is there a I mean obviously that's what we're talking about is the shifting of the population. Is there a sense of what it was and what it is now? Yeah, sure. Uh currently it's uh last was seventy seven percent black, nineteen percent white. So that's where we're at now. But you know, the major changeover happened in the nineties. It went from 83% white to 44% white in 10 years. So the 90s were the beginning of the mass exodus of the white population. And what do we hear? I have not seen the film, would love to. What do we hear from the people interviewed that are that are talked to in this uh, film? I mean, you hear so much from so many different angles. And that was my goal was to interview as many types of people as possible to get their perspective so um, an audience member could come in and, and hear their their experience validated on the screen. Uh, so you really hear from all types, rich, poor, black, white, uh, government personnel, all sorts. So the, the message is that it has gone through this incredible change. In the end, as people walk out of there, what, what's the takeaway from the film? Uh, to come together as a community, that's the theme of the film, because um, if you trust bigger government to take control and to have your best interests met, uh, that's not likely to happen. And if you're too busy fighting against each other and judging each other and, and being in fear of one another, then you're going to let the, the bigger uh, the bigger dude get the best of you. And that's really the, the underlying theme. And I think that's a pretty ballsy political theme, and that could be part of the reason that we were ditched by the theater chain. I'm not really sure. They won't give a definitive answer, but it was an, an immediate drop, so um, disappointing. And that's part of this story. Uh, Philip Andrew Morton with us, director of the film Spanish Lake. Explain that, because it was getting, what, wide release, or at least Warenberg was going to carry it, and then they changed their mind? Yeah, we were screening at the Tivoli for several weeks uh, earlier this summer, and we were looking to move to a different theater. So we started discussions with them two months ago, and we finally had arranged on a September 5th release in St. Louis. And everything was fine, and then Ferguson hit, and within a couple of days they called us and said, it's, it's over, it's not happening. And uh, it was really frustrating because we were kind of counting on them, you know, during those couple months to set up those new screenings. So 
now we're kind of left scrambling and all these kind of business deals take at least a month or two just to get negotiations. So it's a lot of wasted time. Did they indicate, Hey, we think if we show this now, it would be a insensitive or it would be in, incite people. Any explanation at all? I think it was all, all of the above. Um, they were very adamant. There wasn't even a chance that they'd consider playing it. Um, which, you know, I, I understand that I, I can respect the sensitivity there. But at the same time, um, it does feel like censorship to a certain degree. And he hoped that um, they might want to pick that up later. Did they say, well, let's talk about maybe doing this in the fall or in the winter? Well, according to our producer, our producer talked to them. He said that they, they said no, that the whole thing was over and we weren't, we weren't going to run. But then when the press got their release, they said that we were going to think about postponing it. I, that's not what we heard. I don't know if they're just saying that to cover it up. But, um, you know, it's it, it's really hard for us to get back off the ground. We're talking to a couple of theaters to see maybe if they'll take us. But right now we're just trying to be hopeful all the, all the way around. What, what in the film do you think would be offensive to some or, or insensitive at this time? What do you think is in there that might – what what part of the film would cause any kind of negative reaction? I just think it's the overall tone of the film. I mean, I think that the film is so honest all the way around. Um, I didn't put any kind of censors up. So to hear people speak really openly and honestly about race is kind of shocking to people nowadays because we live in such a politically correct world. And so I think that on top of the tension that's building in Ferguson is enough. To, it's like electric right now. So um, people would be on edge. And then, there, you know, there are some opinions expressed and a few words here and there that, you know, tick people off. So I, I could see why. And have you seen the trailer? Because if you've seen the trailer, you get kind of a feeling for the, uh, the feel of the film. Is there... Certainly a conversation about race is, is going on now more than ever. And also with everything happening in Ferguson and, and the, having the blueprint for a documentary about a town with these types of struggles and challenges – might Ferguson be a well you dip into as a filmmaker and tell that story at some point? <laughs> you know, I mean, in general, documentaries are so much work and you don't really make a lot of money off of them. I'm kind of broke, <laughs> to, to be honest. So I don't think I'll be doing anything on Ferguson. I'll leave that to another filmmaker. And I'm sure there are several filmmakers down there shooting away. And I look forward to seeing what they have to do. But Spanish Lake was my story. And I just even... Financially, I can't afford to make another one down there. How did it work? Because you were on Kickstarter for a while, correct? Getting people involved? Yeah, yeah. We did some fundraising on Kickstarter. I put a lot of my own money into it. Um, and then we had an investor at the very end kind of finish it up for us because we were out of money again. So so people listening, if it's not going to be at Werenberg, it's no longer at the Tivoli, is there any other outlet where you can you know make it available online for a fee? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're, we've been working on that for a while. Um, all of these Netflix and, you know, video on demand, all these places, um, we're, in, we're in negotiations with getting it up there and have been for several months. Um, unfortunately, they just take time. And there's a lot of paperwork and contracts and lawyers, and it's, we're doing it as fast as we can. But I, I would expect by next month we'll definitely be online um, for people to stream it. And what kind of feedback from your hometown? What did you get when the film came out this summer? Uh, longtime residents, newer residents, politicians, any of the above. What kind of uh, feedback did you hear? You know, it's been great all the way around. Um, <clears throat> when people finally go see the film, they love it. But there are definitely some skeptics before, you know, and they, they suspect the worst. And they kind of project their own fears onto it. And so I get some angry emails every once in a while just, threatening me or trying to, you know, what are you trying to do with this? Because, you know, the film is ambiguous in terms of, you know, the trailer. You just don't quite know where it's going, but uh, after they say they're fine. Philip, we uh, appreciate your time and look forward to maybe a wider release of Spanish Lake. Thanks so much. Thank you for having me. All right. Philip Andrew Morton, the uh, director of that film.